What is going on guys and welcome back to another very exciting video. In this video we are going to be taking a look at Amazon and Amazon is a stock that I personally do not own but I keep looking at it and where its price is trading and I keep wondering if now is the time to buy in. So in this video what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at Amazon's ad business. This is a business that not a whole lot of people pay attention to so we're going to take a little bit of an in-depth look at what their ads are actually doing for the business and how it is propping up and helping the business and then we are going to take a look at their valuation, their free cash cash flow and then finally end off the video by doing a quick analysis of where the price could go if we see some things change with their PE ratio. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. So let's start off by taking a look at their chart. We can see here today that they were up just under half a percent over the last five days, up around two and a half percent over the last month, down 4.4 percent. And over the last six months, they're down almost 30 percent. If we look at the last year, we can see that from basically their 52 week low to now they are up around 15%. And if we go from their 52 week high to where they're at right now, they are down almost 45%. Here's the article we're going to be taking a look at here today. And it is titled retail search and Amazon's $40 billion advertising business. In 2021, Amazon actually started splitting out their advertising revenue. So we can see from this chart down here that this dotted line before is their other category. It previously held ads within it. And then after, you know, 2020, 21, they started splitting it out. And that's what this solid line actually represents. So we can see that primarily most of this other category was actually made up by ads. Uh, and now in 2022, their advertising business actually makes up just under $40 billion in revenue. And the thing with the ad business, it is a high profit margin business. So they had $39 billion in revenue. And that overall is a small percentage of Amazon's overall $502 billion in revenue in 2022. But it probably has a margin of around 50%. That is a similar number to what we see with Google. Google has around a 50% profit margin. And what that basically means is that if you take 50% of this $40 billion number, it came in with a profit of somewhere around $20 billion, which puts it actually in line with AWS. And AWS actually requires a lot of capital CapEx expenses where advertising does not. And when you look at the global channels of who is winning and who are the top 10 players in advertising, you can see that the two that stand out are the obvious ones, Alphabet and Meta. So these two companies have huge profit margins. You could see that when you look at Alphabet's balance sheet, they are known for having one of the best balance sheets in the world. They stack cash because they have plenty of cash after they are paying off all their expenses. Meta is somewhat similar. We have seen obviously in recent times that Meta has invested a lot of money into the metaverse and that has obviously hurt their business, but they have the profit margins from their ad business to really funnel that cash into this other venture. And then when you look at some of the other top players. I'm not familiar with this company, but you have Alibaba, Amazon, Comcast, Microsoft, Tencent, Baidu, Disney. So a lot of large companies, but really there are only two main players in advertising, Meta and Alphabet. Another interesting point is that ads have actually just recently passed prime in terms of the amount of revenue that they're generating. So we can see here, again, the dotted line is before they broke out ads. It was predominantly made up by ads. But once they started breaking out ads, you could see that their revenue for the advertising business actually passed prime somewhere in early 2022 and has actually created quite a bit of separation between the total revenue. Right now, you know, prime is sitting around $35 billion and then ads like we talked about is sitting around $38 billion in revenue. So you may ask, what is the point in all this? Really, the point is that there is a high demand right now for the advertising business. A lot of people like we have even seen with Microsoft recently are looking at advertising as a high high margin business. It provides a lot of backbone, a lot of revenue and very good margins for underlying businesses and can allow them to basically invest in CapEx. It's what we have seen with Google and it's what we have seen with Meta, where when you have these high profit margin businesses, you can basically take that leftover cash and invest it back into other portions of your business. And that is why we are seeing Microsoft's and we are seeing Amazon start targeting these businesses very heavy and will you know eventually try and really grow these segments out to overall increase their revenue and profit margins. And Amazon is a business that could greatly benefit from having a high profit margin ad business. We could see that their free cash flow over the last 12 months has been $17 billion in losses. And the year before that, they were around $15 billion in losses. And then in 2020, they were actually positive around $26 billion in the green. And what has happened over the last couple of years is they have reinvested into the 
business. They've built out a lot of infrastructure in terms of adding new warehouses in new locations to help get goods to consumers uh, in a lot quicker and a lot more efficient fashion. And overall, that is a good thing for the business for the long term, but it does hurt short term metrics. And that's where advertising can step in and really prop up some of those metrics and really support a lot of this CapEx investment that is needed for a business like Amazon. The biggest issue I have with Amazon is their valuation. It is always difficult for me to look at their valuation and try and justify a purchasing the stock. We could see that here right now, they're trading at a 57.47 forward PE ratio. A few months back, they were trading actually around a 41.32 forward PE ratio, and that is relatively cheap compared to where Amazon has traded in the past. We could see that they've traded all the way up to a 64, you know, just six, seven months ago. And we've seen in the past before that they kind of trade anywhere around that 50 to 60 range is really typical for Amazon. And when you look at their earnings for this fiscal year, it's actually quite difficult to really justify buying Amazon at the current state. So they are projected for 2023 to bring in $1.41 in earnings for an average estimate. For a low estimate, it's 18 cents. And then for a high estimate, it's actually a dollar and 94 cents. I think these could be on the lower end, in my opinion, because what we could see from Amazon is they could actually start turning the business around where we've had all this cheap money over the last couple of years. So they obviously invested a bunch of money into the business. But now in 2023, we're seeing interest rates at a very high levels. So it doesn't make sense for Amazon to really spend a lot of money on CapEx you know, investments. So I would imagine that they'll kind of pull back on some of those items and we could actually see their profitability go up uh, for 2023. With that, what I'd rather do is look at 2024. So the average estimate for 2024 is $2.51. The low estimate is $1.21 and the high estimate is $3.53. So what we can do is we can plug in those earnings and actually come up with a current PE ratio based off these future earnings. So again, for $2.51, we would actually have a forward PE ratio of 37.45. For $1.21, we'd have a forward PE ratio of 77.69. And then for $3.53, we'd have a forward PE ratio of 26.63. So with that average estimate, and what we're kind of doing here is we are saying that Amazon kind of trades at a premium and tends to trade between a 35 to a 45 forward PE ratio. And in my opinion, that is probably accurate and conservative for Amazon, but compared to a lot of other businesses, most businesses will trade somewhere from like a 20 to 25 is what would be fair valuation. So it's a little bit concerning that, you know, at some point in the future, will Amazon go down to a 25 forward PE ratio? Because if it does, then it's going to have a long way to drop if it doesn't keep its earnings growth ahead of it. So what we are saying here is a 35 to 45. And what we could see the stock do if it were to trade at a 35 forward PE ratio, it'd actually drop almost 7%. And if it were were to trade at a 45 forward PE ratio, then it would trade around a 20% uh, up from its current levels. And what's very concerning is, you know, if they come in and they have a number of bad quarters over the next few years, we could actually see Amazon drop in a fairly significant way if the market starts valuing it at a much lower PE ratio. We could see it drop, you know, if it were to be valued at a 35 forward PE ratio, all the way down to $42.35. This would be a, over a 50% drop. And then if it were to be valued at 40 45 forward PE ratio, we could see it drop 40% all the way down to $54.45. And if we see the stock outperform in terms of its EPS, we would see it trading currently around a forward PE ratio of 26.63. And if again, we still say that the fair valuation for Amazon is somewhere between a 35 and a 45 forward PE ratio, we would see the stock go from anywhere around $123.55 all the way up to $158.85 which would be somewhere between a 30 and 70% return. I want to close out the video by talking about this valuation and why I haven't bought into Amazon. So when I look at this value, basically what we are saying is Amazon for 2024, which remember is two years out, they need to hit the high expectations for analysts for them to be trading at a 26 forward PE ratio. So I have trouble with that because what you see over time is a lot of these large companies, whether you're looking at Apple, Google, Microsoft, Microsoft, they tend to trade somewhere between like a 20 to maybe a 30 
forward P ratio when times are good. And Amazon tends to trade above that all the time. And I believe that over time, what's going to happen with Amazon is they're going to revert down to a lot of where these other big tech companies trade somewhere between a 20 and a 30 forward P ratio. And I think what that could do to the stock is two things. The stock could either trade down in a very significant way until it hits that valuation, or the stock could trade sideways for a number of years until it hits that valuation because its earnings finally catch up. And personally, I just don't think that Amazon is worth that risk. I think there's a lot less upside to the stock because they could trade at a premium, but you know, over time, that is not going to happen just indefinitely. They are going to trade down to where investors primarily value companies such as Amazon, and that is somewhere between the 20 and 30 forward P ratio. So that is all my opinion. I want you to look into these companies before you invest in them. Everyone thinks of Amazon and they think of it's a great company, and I do think it is a great company. I just think you also need to look at the valuation that you're paying for a company like Amazon. So again, all my opinion, like I always say, make sure you do your own research. That is the most important thing. Make sure you understand the company, understand what you're getting into. Ads could obviously have a big impact on Amazon and they could you know, help boost the profit margin, but I'd love to see that before I get into a company like this. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.